Welcome to Computer Literacy Skills for Life. I'm so glad you've decided to join this journey. My name is Sandy McVeigh and I'll be helping you every step of the way. You might think it's counterintuitive to take an online course when you're already reticent to learn about new technology, but we learn by doing. And this immersive approach is going to help you grasp and understand the value of technology in your daily and professional life as no other course could. We will be meeting face to face three times throughout our learning process. And we will be at the Dell Tech campus in Stanton on the fifth floor in room number 519. We'll be meeting on Tuesday nights at the beginning of each unit and I'll be sure to remind you. Our first meeting is this Tuesday from 6.30 to 8.30. If you have any questions, I will show you how you can contact me and we'll start a discussion. Other than that, I look forward to meeting you. Now you may be getting this message simply from clicking on a link in an email about an announcement in the course. So I'm glad you know how to check your email but I'm going to show you how to get to our course as well, just in case you have any concerns. So our learning journey will begin at the Dell Tech homepage. That's www.dtcc.edu. I'm going to suggest that you take this course using a standard computer and not a tablet or a phone. That's how I'm recording this walkthrough to make it easy for you to see exactly where you need to go. If you do have any challenges with accessibility, please let me know and I'll do everything I can to accommodate your learning needs. From the Dell Tech homepage, I'd like you to look to the right hand margin and then at the top corner, move back, there's a search button, a search box, and one more button over is my DTCC button that's going to access your personal portal. Click that button and you'll be prompted to log in with the username and password that you use to access all of Dell Tech systems. If you don't know what those credentials are, please see our administrative aid to help you get your email set up. After you've landed on this page, there is a green bar approximately two inches down from the top with some different links. Whenever you see words on a bar like this, this is actually a navigation tool. We're interested in the third link, which is to courses. And we're going to be using the Desire to Learn platform for our course. We'll click on Desire to Learn. And if you have more than one course, you may see more than one panel. Click on the image or the link beneath it to go to our Computer Literacy Skills for Life course. I'm going to switch to the student view and continue the tour from here. In the left hand corner you will see a diamond, a green diamond made up of four smaller diamonds. That will take you back to the Desire to Learn Dell Tech homepage. You'll see our course name and below that you'll see another navigation bar. This time it doesn't have a green background, but it does have words that turn into live links. We'll be focusing most often on content, but you can also drill down to different activities in the course, look at certain tools, and check your grades. This is the help if you need assistance through the Dell Tech team and the desire to learn support. I'd like to draw your attention over to the right hand side of the window and again look up towards the top of the screen. You'll see your name and then a little bell icon that when you hover over it these are updates to the course and if there's something new you'll see a little glowing icon and you can check very quickly what's going on. To the left of that are subscription alerts we probably will not be using very many discussion forums in this particular course, but if we were to have discussions and you wanted to follow someone's thoughts, this is where you could keep track of those comments. To the left of that, 
is our email system. If you have any concerns, you can reach me by emailing through this system, and I will respond usually within 24 to 48 hours. This panel here to the left about another inch would take you back again to that home screen where you could choose any other desire to learn course. So now let's look at the content for this course list. So from the content tool, you're going to see on the left hand side a list of links that can jump you through the course to various places. Right here, we're going to have an overview of the course and you can come back here to see our welcome message. The bookmarks link allows you to tag any page that you find really valuable to come back and access again, uh, whether it's a, a video that you want to rewatch or it's a tip sheet that you would like to have at hand, you can bookmark it and come back to this own personal little repository. The course schedule would give you an idea of timelines and due dates. And then we're going to come down here to the table of contents. The table of contents starts off with the getting started module. And I'm going to collapse all of the modules so that you get an idea that, that this list of links is connected to the information that is shown over here on the right side of the window. So if we start with getting started and course long resources, you'll see that our course policy is here that you can look over. The course policy has an introduction that explains to you more about what the course is like and what you can expect. Before each unit, you will be taking a pre-assessment survey so that I can learn what your current level of proficiency is with that type of technology. Based on that, you will be challenged and supported to um, complete assignments within your scope of ability. I strongly recommend that you read the how to guarantee success in this class. So we can move on to the next item by clicking the arrow to the right hand towards the right hand margin of the page when you hover over it, it says next. And here is the course syllabus. The syllabus has everything that you need as far as accreditation for this course. Where we're going to be meeting, how much how many credits you can earn, how I we will be evaluating your performance here, what the grading policy is links to our disability and support services here at the college and how um, your performance and how the elements in this course links to the overall curriculum guidelines and objectives and goals. So there's a lot of reading here but if you want to see just how this course can tie in to your overall success I encourage you to read through it. By the time students get to Unit 3, you'll be very familiar with the unit pre-assessment, but I'm going to show you this one to get an idea of what you'll be completing. So this is for um, Google and Cloud Computing, how much prior knowledge you have to that. And you're going to select the option that most closely describes your familiarity with Cloud Computing. You'll also select your option that most closely describes your familiarity with Google Docs, with Google Sheets, with Google Slides, and Google Forms, and Google Sites. By answering all of those to the best of your ability, we'll be able to challenge you at the right level. Everyone will get a great overview of the tools but if you've already have familiarity with them, we can push your assets to the next level. There will be another start, stop, continue feedback poll. There is one in each unit so that I can tell how you're doing. And I hope that you complete it on a regular basis. This is not an exam. This is a, an opportunity 
for us to keep talking about what's working for you and what we could tweak to make things better for you in the course. Uh, when we think of a Microsoft Excel, or we can think of Google Sheets, we think of Microsoft Excel, and Google Slides are like PowerPoint. Depending on your skill level, you may have additional modules available about Google Websites and Google Forms. And we'll be meeting online each Tuesday that we don't meet face-to-face -face for anyone who would like to join online office hours. So if you have any questions, you'll, we'll have a web conference and I will send out an, a reminder and a link so you can join me online from the comfort of your own home and ask the questions that you need answered uh, and have a great discussion with your peers. So I look forward to helping you on this journey and once again, I am so glad that you've chosen Computer Literacy Skills for Life. Hi everybody, welcome to Unit 3 of Computer Literacy Skills for Life. You are heading into the home stretch and you've done such great work. I just wanted to remind you that we will meet in person at the Dell Tech campus this Tuesday night from 6.30 to 8.30, that's October 9th, in our regular room, room number 519. Although this meeting isn't mandatory, our participants have overwhelmingly said that meeting face-to-face -face is really making this experience much better for them. Uh, the learning activities that we've been doing together in class really help build on the online information. Uh, we'll be delving deeply into the world of cloud computing in this unit and some of the most popular Google products. So uh, remember that you'll be having a pre-assessment in this section so that I can um, get the learning goals and your assignments mapped to your skill level and then push you out of your comfort zone just a little. Uh, refer to the information in this announcement below that has everything in it that you need to keep on track, including everything I said in this video. Finally, I want to do shout outs and recognitions like I do every unit. Um, and you can see some excellent examples attached to the bottom that I'm going to mention. So Darren's Dream Boy PowerPoint. Uh, Darren thoughtfully applied animation and smart art charts and transition between his slides and use text sparingly. So take a look at his sample. It's a wonderful model. Jamie did created a school newsletter using a word template. Um, and she had mixed feelings about using the template. It came out beautifully, but she found it challenging in some ways. And next time might start from a plain word document and then just apply the strategies that she learned in our section on word. So from our email bag, Anu shared that by applying the effective internet searching techniques as she learned in Unit 1, she is now the proud owner of a new car. She looked up values on Kelly Blue Book and then set up an alert on cars.com and felt confident to negotiate her best deal when a car came up uh, that was suitable for her needs. And that's great. And then from the online office hours, I want to shout out to Peter to go, go, go. His Excel pivot skills have been recognized by management. And next week, he's going to do a train the trainer thing for his colleagues at his work. So keep taking what you're using in these sessions and apply them to real life. And I'll see you in class. Okay, so to my colleagues, if you have had the stamina to uh, watch to the end of this video, I would definitely like to talk about how I would uh, use some of the tools in D2L. Were I able to actually teach in this environment? And one of those is the conditional release formatting. Uh, for my sample course, I was uh, dividing the content up into three units and having students do a pre-assessment to get them at level one, two, or three. Um, based on their original, you know, aptitudes. That way it keeps everybody moving and challenged without feeling overwhelmed. Uh, definitely D2L has the option. I'm going to show you this uh, if we go to the bottom. So I would have like three different versions of the assignments. Uh, level one would make a Google account. Sometimes that's really hard 
um, just to get through that and to learn how to sign in and out of it. Okay, so their assignment would be to take notes on how different devices and browsers change the experience and then submit their observations would be their assignment. Um, for smartphone users, I would say let's not do the app right now um, until they were more comfortable with it, but give them a note about that because we know that pop up is going to happen. Level 2 users would get a similar sort of assignment, only be encouraged to, yes, go for the app and learn how they're different. So uh, after signing in and out, they would make their notes, and then they would decide which browsers and devices work best for them and explain why they have preferences. For level three, yes, uh, encourage the phones. I'm not going to tell them how to log into their account. They should already know how to do that. Um, but beyond just deciding what works best for them, develop a recommendation that you'd share with friends and families new to the cloud computing environment. Um, and then submit not only their observations, but their recommendation plan. So that's, that's how I would level things up. But what I wanted to show you, so down here at the bottom, I would definitely be using these options to, um, if I click on the date, okay, you'll see that there's a thing here called release conditions. And I would definitely create a condition. So I'm not sure how D2L could uh, would work for me, but I'm sure I would figure this out. Because you can make awards, you can say if they've completed a particular checklist item, uh, if they are enrolled in a group. So I'm thinking if I was doing level 1, 2, and 3, I may put them in groups for a certain section. Or if they've finished a completed um, competency. Unfortunately, the quizzing tool within, or the surveying tool within Desire to Learn, did not have the ability for me to score different responses for different points. So their pre-assessment, you know, if they said I don't have any um, experience with Google tools, I want them to get a zero for that. But if they, uh, I have like five different options, and I used a Qualtrics survey because that lets me say. You know, they get two points if they answered this, three points if they answered that. Um, so they have a summative score based on all of the things in the Google uh, portfolio that I'm asking about in this unit, and I can group them that way. Unfortunately, it doesn't hook in with Desire to Learn, so there would be some manual making groups or something like that. But just take a look at all of these different conditions that you can then release an assignment or release an item based on that condition. So I'm going to um, just encourage you to really look at that. The other thing I learned about D2L is that the composing window uh, doesn't seem to have active spell check. So I was finding spelling errors, which does not look good for us as instructors. Uh, I began writing things out in a Google Doc, doing all my corrections there, and then copying and pasting into the composition windows in D2L. And finally, if you um, found this on your own, that's great. Um, but I didn't know if you saw that they have the check accessibility here uh, in every of these uh, WYSIWYG windows. And that lets you check and see or bolded it. But using the styles is the way to go. The other thing is if you just wanted to change a text color, that's up here. It gives you a compatibility checker for color um, uh, contrast. Okay, so the accessibility ratio is this, and I don't know what that actually compiles or what that comes by, but you want it to pass. So let me show what would happen if I chose, like, say, we have a white background. So let's say I chose a light green. Notice what happens. We're not passing that contrast ratio of the background to the text. You can see that that's not going to be picked up well enough. So I think that's wonderful that that's built in. And there you go. Okay. So just take a look at that uh, and you know make your things more accessible as you go along, and that way you don't have to change things later. So it's been a lot of fun being with you in this course, and I am taking away quite a lot and I hope I'm leaving a breadcrumb for others. So thanks a lot and have a great one. Good luck!